Okay, I think we've got enough uh, people here that we'll go ahead and start. Uh, so we may go slightly over into the lunch break, uh, but I think that's okay. All right. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Jolene Liang from Squirrel AI Learning. Uh, I'm the co-founder of the company, and my PhD was in intelligence science and uh, system. So today I'd like to share uh, what we've done with AI adaptive learning system with LLM. So the product we uh, developed is called Squirrel AI Large Adaptive Model, LAM. So the big difference between LAM and purely educational LLM is that with Squirrel AI's LAM, it's not only dialogue-based learning um, system or tutor. It's like the students enter the system and they do the test. So the system knows the student and understands the behavior. So as long as the student has been studied in the system for longer time, the system understands the student much better. And then the, student, uh, the system will recommend what the student need to learn next steps, such as uh, learning contents, videos, um, questions, practices, lecture notes. So the students just wait and see what the system will recommend to the student. And with large language models, the students can um, have interaction, ha can have a conversation with the system. So it's both from the system to the user and from the user to the system. It's both uh, directions. So with purely educational LLM, we know that only user, users can ask questions. And once you log out and you come back next time, the system doesn't understand you and doesn't uh, record your learning behavior and your data. So that's the big difference. So how we build up this uh, system? This is our L LAM framework. So the bottom line is the layer, the data layer. So with the data, we have the content, including uh, the videos, uh, questions, and mistakes, and why the students make mistakes. The mistake reasoning map, and also uh, some lecture notes, analysis of the, uh, the learning records. So that's the content part. And also we have the knowledge graph, for both the subject's curriculum and also the MCM knowledge graph. So with the knowledge graph, we have break down the uh, knowledge, point, knowledge points from the regular knowledge points level into nano scale level knowledge points, which I will mention later on. And because our system was uh, built up in 2014, we have been like nine years using in the real educational uh, place, so we have had over 24 million students accumulated using in our system, and also we had uh, 10 billion uh, learning behavior data in the system, which can help us to calculate more accurately. And for the middle layer is the more, very important one is our LAM model. So with LAM, we have the AI agents, which will be next page, and the RAC, and also the knowledge graph, and the multimodal educational LLM. So with Multimodal, we have uh, different types of the model of the learning contents that we can recommend to the students. And also the system collects different types of the learning um, signal, uh, behavior, data, and records. So it's multimodality in the whole system. So with LLM um, in the recent one year, compared to without LLM, like the last eight years for us to use adaptive learning itself, the difference is the large scale of the parameter, the large scale of the data can help the system understand the students more, understands the data more. And we could find out there are some invisible and hidden relationships between the different knowledge points and even the knowledge points, knowledge points from the subject and the knowledge points from MCM. So what is MCM? I will mention later. So the first layer is our adaptive learning layer. So that's the one we've been uh, developing for more than nine years. So we can do recommendation, uh, adapt, adapting, sorry, adaptive learning ad recommendation, and we, the system can provide personalized learning paths for each different student. And also the emotional communication between the system and the student. So this is the agents. Um, so different agents has different functions. For example, um, one agent has the 
function of following the student's learning behavior and to provide uh, MCM. And the other, engine, the other agent is to do the recommendation or assessment and also the deep knowledge tracing engine. So I won't go deeper here. And this is the nano level scale level uh, of our knowledge points. So basically this is the highest level of the knowledge points from the regular textbook or class. And then we break down into nine layers. So this is the second layer and this is third la layer. It will go deep to the ninth layer. And MCM. So MCM is a system we call mode of thinking, learning capacity, and learning methodology. We found out that students learn um, knowledge points from subject, that's fine, right? But it's more important they have the learning ability. And sometimes a student did not have good scores. It's not because, um, you know, it, of course it's because of the history of the learning was not good, but the student's learning ability was pretty good. So, so for example, from mathematics, we can find out there's some um, thinking like backward thinking and different uh, types of abilities. And from language, uh, English, Chinese, different language has different MCM. And also from physics, from chemistry, we can find out all different MCMs. So there was one st student called Joe. He was like grade 10 student. He was almost banned from, by the school or the family because he drank a lot, smoked a lot. His score was the top bottom, uh, sorry, the bottom of the class. But actually, even though the learning records was really bad of the student, but the ability of learning of Joe was pretty good. So by the tracing, the root tracing system of the adapting, adaptation system, we found out Joe's prerequisite uh, weakness from grade seven and even earlier ages are uh, very, very poor. So the system recommend Joe to learn the previous knowledge points and then he can come back. And at the end, Joe was the top three of the student. And another example, there are three students, their mastery of uh, the knowledge are the similar, oh, 80%. So the blue ones are mastered and 20% are the pink ones. And another student, Sun, has the similar mastery, but the weakness are totally different. And the third student, the weakness are different. That means if the three students are sitting in one classroom, actually they should learn differently. That's how we do. We uh, recommend them to learn differently in their own learning paths and suitable for their own learning contents. And finally, I, I like to say um, from 2017 until now, we have uh, organized more than 100 human versus machine competitions. So all the competitions were won by Squirrel AI LAM. So, um, that's how we want to build out an AI virtual tutor. So the human tutors were in the competition. They were you know, superior <laughs> teachers, super teachers, good teachers of the country, of the city. So if a machine can win, which means the machine, the system can actually act as an AI, uh, AI virtual tutor. So we have donated over 10 million uh, learning accounts to r remote areas, poor families, where they cannot access, they don't, they don't have any teaching resources, and they don't have money to pay for it. <laughs> so um, that's how we want to do. Of course, one hand, we need to make commercialized, right? But on the other hand, we can use adaptive plus LLM system to help poor families, poor kids, and remote areas. And this is final page, that's how we implement our software, our, our AM, into the hardware. So the middle one is the learning tablet, so we can do the devices. And this is the whole ecosystem of Squirrel AI's hardware system. Thank you. So we have time for uh, some questions. Uh, I, I had a quick question. Um, in uh, my experience, um, like managing histories, uh, previous conversations is, is, is uh, at, uh, in some contexts very difficult. Um, I was wondering if you could share some details about how you how, how you do that, how you learn, how how you have the model learn from previous histories and. and that. Okay, so for the system, at the beginning of the system, we have the learner model the student model. And of, of course, we have uh, different models for different agents and engines. 
So we need to label, we need to make label by humans at the beginning to make sure what kind of behavior means, um, you know, what kind of the meaning. So, um, so to build up a learner model is very important. So different student has different learner model. So that's how the machine learns from the learners. Yeah, and then the more important is we need to have enough data to train the model. So uh, from 2019, uh, sorry, 2014 to 2018, the system was not that accurate because the learner models was not accurate. So uh, later on, we had more data, more users. Like now, we had ten, over 10 billion learning behavior. So that's how we train the model, so that can be very accurate. So actually, mo most important is the the model set up at the beginning, and then huge amount of data. Yeah. Uh, so, so to clarify, you are um, directly training into the model and training into the weights, the previous conversations that have, or previous histories that have been had uh, with, with the students? Exactly, yeah, the, all the uh, data was from the users, from the students. Mm -hmm. And the model um, is multimodal, it's not only the learning uh, records itself, it could be eye concentration, and also um, if we had mouse before, so the, how they move the mouse, and also now we have uh, the the pad, the students can write on the pad, you know, all sorts of multimodal uh, data, yeah. Thank you. Fascinating presentation. Mm -hmm. um, I really love this idea of integrating learning behavior with domain knowledge. I guess like one clarifying question, is your audience, student audience, mostly high school okay. students? Because um, I was wondering like how would this adapt depending on like the stage that the students are? Uh, currently, we focus on K to 12, so from elementary to high school. Yeah, it covers all age. Uh -huh. How do you see like this model might adapt for like college students and like maybe even graduate students? Yeah, actually, we are looking at it uh, for adults, for college students. Uh, they'll be totally different. So the engine can be used, uh, can be you know kind of copied, but the knowledge graph, the contents. Um, that's all different, and for adults, that's more probably PBL-based uh, projects and mm -hmm. to be implemented into the adaptive um, LAM system, yeah. But it can definitely be used, yeah. Okay, thank you.